and welcome to the Word and Worship Church. Truly, we thank God for who He is in our lives. We thank Him for covering us. We thank Him for everything He does for us. We thank Him for truly we trust that our lives are in His hands. And we love Him on this morning. Amen. How many of you love God just for who He is? just really want to tell him this morning, Lord, I love you. Why don't you put your hands together wherever you are and bless the name of Jesus on this morning.
any distractions anything that's going to keep the word of God from planting and growing in our hearts our mind and our spirits so dear Father we delight in your presence dear Father we declare and decree that you will save somebody that you will heal deliver, set free dear Father we want your words manifested. So dear Father, I decrease that you may increase, hide me, hide me, hide me behind your cross. I totally submit myself to you. Use these lips of clay to give us a life-changing eternal word. Before I say amen, just elevate one hand and bask in the glory and the glory of God. Because you are my peace. And I worship you. Come on, come on, elevate both hands and say, Lord, saturate us in your glory tonight. Ooh, this morning, this morning, saturate us. God, you are our church. And we're going to dwell in you. So do it right now in the name of Jesus. Have your very own way in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Come on, right where you are in your house, wherever you may be, just open up your mouth. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, oh God. Come on, come on, love on them, love on them. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Come out of your soul, out of the depths of your heart. Come on, come on, worship God, worship Him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, oh God. I'm not going to tell you what to say or even how to say it, but love on the Holy Spirit this morning. Come on, come on, manifest your glory, oh God. Have your way.
they not the spirit and the anointing of God. Let them overflow in your life. Let them fill your heart with this joy. I am all your soul. All of you and none of us. You don't even have to be loud with it. Just say, Lord, have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Continue to manifest your glory. And your anointing. As we take our seats, I want you to scream to God be the glory. Now put those hands together and give us praise. Come on, come on, Phil, let me win it. Take the God be the glory. I thank the give them praise in advance. I thank you to give them honor before the word of your soul. I thank you to glorify and thank you before the miracle that manifested. Come on, begin to praise God for being God, not because of the blessing. Praise God because of you the blessing. Just that verse, you had rescued my life. I don't know who's watching that really needs that to really resonate in their spirit. Somebody say just a little while longer. We're going to be doing our powder room and locker room on this week. The locker room will be Tuesday at 6.30. That's our men's meeting and Bible study. The powder room will be our women's ministry, and that's going to be Wednesday at 6.30. Again, locker room at 6.30 on Tuesday via Zoom. And the powder room will be Wednesday at 6.30. I've been praying and seeking God, and of course, watching the news, and just a quick reopening update. We will continue to have our virtual services for the entire month of July. Your safety is our priority. As we have faith and believe God, we thank God for his wisdom and guidance. I do appreciate your patience. Amen. We all desire to come out here and to fellowship. So I just need you all to just continue to believe God and, and just trust that God is leading us in the right direction. I just want you to repeat after me, the word of God is my life. And the word of God is my truth. We will live for the principles of the Bible. Let's go to Ephesians 5 and 22 through the 32nd verse. I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. Ephesians 5, 22 through 32. As you all are looking for the scriptures, again, we do thank God for all of our guests and visitors. And if you would like to get more, more information about the Word of Worship Church, go to www.church.org. And also, we encourage you to fill out our contact visitors card online as well. Ephesians 5. 22 through 32. 
out of the New Living Translation. When you found the scriptures, please say amen. I apologize, Ephesians, and we're going to start at the 21st verse. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body and the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean and wash by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot, a wrinkle, or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own body. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of this body. The 31st verse. As the scripture says, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm just going to just use as a thought this morning, spots and wrinkles. Somebody repeat after me, spots and wrinkles. Spots and wrinkles. Paul so eloquently uses this analogy and symbolisms of the church being the bride of Christ and God Jesus Christ our father and Jesus is married to the church and so as Paul was writing Ephesians and talking to the Ephesian church he uses this, this analogy to give even though he was using spiritual connotations to give this natural wisdom as it relates to intimacy relationships, commitment. A powerful thing that, 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 that Paul is saying, he was saying, wives, he wants us to submit, I want you all to submit to your husband, but before he said that, he said, I want you all to submit to each other. And in our society, sometimes when we hear the word submit, we kind of cringe. But it says, wives, this means submit to your husbands as the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife just as Christ is the head of the church. Submit simply means to respect and to support. And so as Paul was saying, he's like, I, I need every woman to submit to their, 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 their own husband just as, as you submit to your husband, you, you, you are showing reverence to God. And that just simply means that you're respecting him. That just simply means that you are holding him in esteem. And, 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 and as God moves us to that place, that is not a bad word. Because ultimately, for a woman to willfully submit to her husband, that shows a level of honor and shows a level of respect. But just like the woman submits to her husband, God wants the church to submit to him. Submission is simply means that I am going to be totally sold out to you. Submission means that I respect you enough and love you enough to be committed to you. And sometimes this word commitment can be a dirty word in this modern day society. Because commitment costs us something. Commitment moves beyond emotional appeal and commitment moves beyond what's convenient or inconvenient. But when we're committed to our spouses, just like we're committed to God, that means we're not going to allow ourselves to move outside of the boundary when things get tough. It, it, it's easy to run to the exit sign when we are challenged. And so Paul was giving us some wisdom but he was saying, just as you submit to your husbands, husbands, I need you to realize that you have also an awesome responsibility. Submission means respect, but we have to honor God. 
As long as we're moving in the direction of God and we're honoring God by loving our wives, then it will be easier for them to support us. Men need respect and support and women need security. And so when it comes down to how a man needs to lead his family, it simply means when you're the head of your household, God has given us a leadership responsibility. I, I said this earlier this week when I made a post, is that as the head of our household, God wants us to be servant leaders. As we serve our wives, we can serve God. It is hard, I don't go my she, to respect God and not respect our wives. It, it, it is hard to submit to God and we're not submitting to our wives. And what that means is submission means respect. When, 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 when women and when our wives feel secure, they don't mind respecting us. And so we have an awesome responsibility to allow God to lead us as we follow God. Because Jesus Christ was so committed and is so committed to the church that he gave his life for the church. And what God said is that I want the head of the household, I need my men to stand up and you, he, let me slow down. He said, I need my men to stand up. He said, I'm giving you a roadmap on how you need to love your wives just the way I love the church. He said, I love the church so much that I died for the church. I died and I spilled my blood for the church because I wanted to cover my church. And ultimately, he said, I am covering you because I love you. Yeah. You see, ultimately, this dichotomy of spirituality that God is leading us, and as we move closer to God, God wants to move closer to us. And as we move closer to him, then God is saying that I need you to follow my example. And many times in our society, it's hard for us to submit because we don't know how to love. And many times we have been in broken relationships and everything that we've seen around us in broken households. So when we come together as man and wife, it's hard for us to be able to function adequately in a relationship because we've seen dysfunctions in our lives. But what God is saying is that just like there is maybe some dysfunction in the church, that doesn't mean that you need to leave the church. And Jesus knows that the church is full of ups and downs and that the church is the bride, which simply means that when the church get out of hand, he doesn't leave the church. He sits there and loves the church. And many times with us, when we get offended by our wives or we get offended by our husbands, we, we, want to, we want to exit. But what God is saying is that I, I want us to really look at this dichotomy. He wants us to really look and to see how God is loving the church. Again, it is a challenge for us to realize that it's going to take God for us to have that God kind of love. It says, for well, husband, this means love your wife just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her and made her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself in a glorious day without a spot or wrinkle. Now Paul is moving to the spiritual connotation. He said Jesus Christ gave his blood, he gave his life for us because he understood that the church, the bride, was full of spots and wrinkles, but he loved us so much that he spilled his blood for us so we could be clean. And I'm here to tell you that we are the church and the bride of Christ, and the way we're going to respect God is by loving God. We have to love him, we have to respect him, and we have to be committed to him because God wants us to be clean. That's why he gave his life for us. Right. Many times, brothers, I get it, we have a huge responsibility. And as a servant leader of being the head of our household, we have to lead by serving. We, we have to ask God for a level of maturity because it is easy to want to respond in kind negatively when we're not feeling loved, when we're not feeling respected, and when we're not feeling appreciated. But many times as God loves us, when we take the example from Jesus Christ, even though the bride of Christ sometimes didn't get it right, even though sometimes the bride of Christ was ups and down, Jesus Christ was always committed. That's what you call unconditional love. His love was impressive predicated on whether or not we were good or bad. His love wasn't predicated on us whether or not we did everything right. He understood that we wasn't going to do everything right. And that's why he gave himself for us. Yes. Selfishness means that I am going to love you even when you seem to be unlovable at times. 
Uh, you, 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 why do you have to respect us? Um, why do you have to submit to us? Um, but, but, but husbands, we have to die for you. But simply means that I have to be willing to give my life even when I don't like you sometimes. Come on. This is the church of God in Christ. I guess I'm talking to the lights. Because if you've been married long enough, we can be real. I love you, but sometimes I don't like you. Yeah, I can't get no help up in here. What you talking about, Rev? I'm talking about being in a committed relationship. I'm talking about how we need to model our lives based off how Jesus Christ loves the church. He said, brothers, we have to be willing to give our lives for our wives. Yeah. And when we move down, watch this. To make her holy and clean. Now he's talking about the church spiritually. Washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church, a spot or wrinkle or other blemishes. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. You know, that's why we love God and that's why we serve God because Jesus Christ died on the cross when we wasn't worthy. He loved us when we didn't love ourselves. And in the same manner, this is the 28th verse, in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. Watch this. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. Brothers, as we begin to grow and as we begin to ask God, help me to love my wife and show me how to be a leader. Uh, what Paul is saying is that there's, a, that there's a simple antidote that you can measure how much you love your wife. Uh, do you love your wife the way you love yourself? And when we love ourselves, he said, most men or most people are not going to do harm to themselves. Most men are going to take care of themselves and love themselves and respect themselves. And what God is saying, that's the mandate that I have for the men of God. He said, from this day forward, the model is love your wife more than you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, then that's another story. What are you trying to say? What God is saying is that I'm putting together the roadmap and the strategy for, 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 for there to be a wholesome house, for there to be structure in my house. And many times when we take our models from the world, the world has not given us the model. And I can understand I've been mad almost 25 years and being a, a father for almost 23 years, it can get tough sometimes. And sometimes it can get hard, but Jesus will help us bear this cross. And what God is saying is that I want you to realize that I'm giving you the anointing in the natural realm to step up in the spiritual realm. He said, take my lead. He said, I want you to take my lead. He said, I want you to love your wives and cherish your wives and commit yourself to your wives. I know it's hard, but I didn't say it was going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. And when we can show her that level of security, she don't mind respecting and submitting. And I must say it takes the help of the Lord because a lot of times, brothers, we come into the relationship broken and sometimes we come into the relationship confused because we don't really know what we need to do. But God is trying to show us through the word. He said, I'm trying to move my people to a place spiritually to know that God wants a church without a spot or wrinkle, but that's okay. He wants us to be submissive to him. He wants us to be dedicated to him. He wants us to be focused on him. He wants us to love him unconditionally, which means God said, I want my people to realize that I ain't going nowhere, that I am committed to you. You don't ever have to worry about your security with me. He he said, as long as you repent, even if you don't repent, I am going to be here to love you through thick and thin. And many times, it's hard for us to really, from the natural standpoint, it's hard for us to really open up and be vulnerable because we are afraid of rejection. We, we are afraid that if I open up my heart and open up my spirit, and we're talking about even in the marriage relationship, because sometimes it takes years and years for us to break down those walls to be able to either submit, to respect, or to protect because we don't know how. But what God is saying that I want you to realize that I'm your father. He said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to ever forsake you, and you can be safe with me. But God is saying that even natural, but more so spiritually, he said, I need my people to enter into a greater level of vulnerability with me. And many times it's hard for us to be vulnerable because we've been hurt. 
And many times we have been damaged in our natural relationship because we've had people to drop us. We had people that were supposed to be committed to us to break our hearts. And now we come into the presence of the Lord with some re reservations. But what God is telling me to tell the people of God, he said, I see your spots. I see your wrinkles. I see your inconsistency. I know you've been damaged. I know you've been wounded. But I ain't going nowhere. I, I don't need you to save your... I don't need you to save your love for somebody else. He said, I am here for you. And what God is telling me to tell somebody today, he said, I am going to heal you today so you can be able to be submissive, supportive, and to be able to protect them to your spouses. Because God said, my mandate for the people of God is for us to have whole lives. He wants our family structures to be together. And the enemy fights the family because he understands that when we get together, if we can really get together, together and one I pour into you and you pour into me I pour into you and you pour into me that we can come together as one and do some things the challenge is when I'm pouring into you and you're not pouring into me Amen. the challenge is, is when I don't feel loved and because I don't feel loved you don't feel safe so now we have this dysfunctional relationship that's not going anywhere we have this dysfunctional relationship that's not only not being a light to God but we're not being the light to each other. And that's why the enemy, he fights unity. The enemy fights, he wants brokenness. I've seen situations where people have been living together for years, and as soon as they get married, they break up. What is it? It's commitment. It's this whole idea that I, I love you enough, and I trust you enough, to be able to connect you to in the spiritual covenant of marriage. And the spiritual covenant of marriage simply means that God is going to ordain the relationship. But the enemy understands that if I can keep you from being committed, then there will be no unity. Somebody say spots and wrinkles. Spots and wrinkles. So again, as we kind of move closer to what Paul is telling us using the spiritual analogy and the natural analogy to really talk about committed spiritual relationships. The 29th verse says, no one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it. Just as Christ cares for the church and we are members of his body. 31st verse, as the scripture says, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. That simply means that God wants us to leave and get everybody out of our business. It is going to be hard for you all to cleave, watch. That cleaving is a situation where the two become one. And most married couples, newlyweds, don't understand that it takes some time to be able to cleave. Cleaving is a spiritual connotation that we're trying to carry out in the flesh. Cleaving simply means that we have two separate people from two different personalities, two different backgrounds coming together as one. But the only way we can really come together as one is we're going to have to get everybody else out of our business. You can get angry. Mad as fish grease, as somebody would say. You talk to your family. Talk about, yes, he this and he that and she this and he that. 24 hours later, you ain't really mad no more, praise the Lord. And y'all done kissed and made up. And everything that you've told your family, they haven't forgotten. Amen. And what God is saying is that I want unity. He said, I want the people of God to cleave to me. He said, the way you cleave to me, the way you are focused and dedicated to me, that's how I want you to be to your spouses. Just a quick side note to my single brothers and sisters. Some of the first questions you really need to ask somebody, and if you're ready to be married, then you say that up front. You will, and this goes for both genders, you will know where a person's mind is if you tell them on the first date that you want to be married. If you're really ready to be married, then you don't want nobody wasting your time. 
And as we, as you all are trying to get to know that person again, you all are praying and you are seeking God and you want God to lead you and you want God to guide you. I got it. I got it. You want him to have a six pack and speak in tongues. You can have it. Turn to your baby. You can have it. Praise the Lord. If you're not married. If you are, you're just going to have to pray for the one you've got to get a six pack. Praise the Lord. You ain't helping me out. when you over there. So watch this. So we're talking about cleaving. We're talking about two becoming one. But what has to happen is, my brothers and sisters, even as you all are dating and you're praying and asking God for a spouse and asking God to connect you, your mind has to be made up that marriage is the way to go, which simply means you're not going to let anybody play house with you when you know you're supposed to be the husband or the wife. You cannot get wifely benefits and I don't have no ring. You can't get husband benefits like paying your bills, praise the Lord. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm meddling. I'm meddling. You can't get husband benefit if there's no commitment. And what God is trying to tell me to tell you, he said, if you really want to know how committed a person will be to you, ask him how committed they are to God. And if you have a standard for your life and that you know that God, I want a God-centered, not a perfect, but I want a God-centered spouse. If you want a God-centered spouse, stop dating people that's not God-centered. Because the way he is now, that's what you need to expect later. I'm not saying God can't change him. I'm not saying that God can't deliver them. But it's going to be hard for you all to cleave as one when you all are two totally different. And the only thing is that God is saying that I want my people to get on one accord. I need my people to come together as one. He said, I need my people to have healthy relationships. If we can have a healthy marriage, we can have a healthy family, we can have a healthy church, and we can have a healthy community. Somebody say, spots and wrinkles. Spots and wrinkles are things, those proclivities those dysfunctional issues, those sin issues that's preventing us from cleaving to God and from cleaving to each other. But what God is saying, he said, I have an antidote for you. He said, if you can allow me to clean you up spiritually, if you can allow me to get your mind right spiritually, matter of fact, we'll talk about your spouses later. He said, if you love me, I can teach you how to love them. He said, but a lot of times, we don't know what commitment is because we're not committed to God and it's going to be hard for us to be committed to our spouse. Come on. Don't get me wrong. The benefit of me loving God is that I'm going to love my wife. The benefit of my wife loving God is that she's going to love me. And what God is saying, he said, the way we're going to love our spouses need to be in respect and honor to God. Somebody say spots and wrinkles. Spots and wrinkles. As I wrap up, he said, for a man who loves his wife actually shows love to himself. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of his body. As the scripture says, a man shall leave his father and mother and join to his wife and to unite into one. Somebody say, Lord, help us to be one. That doesn't mean that you can't have your own opinions. That doesn't mean that you can't have your own hobbies. That don't mean you have to have a be duplicate after me. That simply means that we have the same agenda. We have the same core values, and we're going the same direction. Somebody say spots and wrinkles. Spots and wrinkles. 32, this is a glory, great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. As I wrap up, Jesus is simply saying that I'm calling for a church that's without a spot or wrinkle. He said, I shed my blood for you to be saved. He said, because ultimately, I want you to present yourself in the best light. He said, I'm going to be on my way back, and I'm going to come back. And he said, I want you to be ready. See, many times when we go out on our first dates, we're going to make sure that we present ourselves in the best light. I'm pretty sure that if you date somebody on their on your first date and they come with a shirt full of spots and wrinkles I, 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 unless you're just really desperate I really don't see it being a, uh, a second date but God is saying just like you are taking pride to present yourself watch this, naturally to your spouses he said I want you to take out the time to present yourself spiritually to me God is saying is that I am going to present myself so he can remove all the spots and wrinkles somebody say spots and wrinkles spots and wrinkles and when we realize that the spiritual analogy 
that Paul began to just recite and to dictate and explain to us. The church is the bride. And Jesus is the bridegroom. And he loves and cherish and respect his church. He has given us the model and the template for how our natural spousal relationship should be. Submissiveness doesn't mean that you're insignificant. Submissiveness simply means that I am going to willfully follow you as you follow Christ. Another thing is, y'all, we're going to have to cut each other a break. I'm not saying that we need to allow each other to be treated any kind of way. But I think sometimes we go into these relationships with these ideas that the person is perfect. And it's just human nature for us to present the best side of us to you because we don't want you to leave. We have to allow God to be the center of the relationship. And when we allow God to be the center of the relationship, turn to your neighbor and say, it's still going to take work. And so what God's saying is that, wives, lover, respect your husbands. And as you honor Christ, as you serve Christ, I want you to honor them. Men, love your wives as you love yourselves. Cherishing her. Dedicating your life to her. And most of all, being willing to die for her. There should never be a situation where our wives feel unsafe. Even if you can't fight, act like you can. Praise the Lord. Or get beat up for love. I can't get no help in here. What he's trying to say, Reverend. The only thing I'm trying to say is that God has a mandate for the family. So even if you're not married, it's still the spiritual connotation that Paul was getting us to see. That Jesus Christ loves us unconditionally. Loves us so much that he understood and saw how bad of a shame we were in. But he didn't leave us with spots and wrinkles. He died for us. So as I wrap up, I just want everyone to be encouraged. Lakeitha, come up here, please. I'm going to pray for all of our marriages. Then I'm going to pray. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come up, Lakeitha. I'm going to pray for you all can stay in. I'm going to pray for us as a church, as a church, and that we are the bride that's ready to be presented to Jesus Christ on his way back. Yes. That as a church, yes. as a people, that we are preparing for Jesus Christ's return. And when he returns, he wants us to be ready. He wants us to be holy. He wants us to be sanctified. Sanctified simply means that we're set aside, separating ourselves from sin, for his use only. I'm going to pray for the church. I'm going to pray for marriages. And then I'm going to pray for people that desire to be married. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Dear gracious Father, we are in your presence in all. And we're so grateful and thankful that you loved us so much that you gave your son Jesus Christ to die for our sin. And it's because of his precious blood that after we confess and repent that that precious blood wipes away and washes away every spot and every wrinkle. And then you present us faultless before the Father Thank you right now. Thank you. So dear Father, forgive us for all of our sins and purify our hearts and sanctify our minds and anything inside of us that's not like you, take it out of us right now. For that man or that woman that don't know the Lord as their personal Savior and they're ready for you to wipe away all of their sins and to wash away all of their blemishes and, and, and spots and to iron them and, and to, to, to sanctify them. God, come into their hearts and their minds right now. 
Dear Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, hold my hand, sweetheart, to touch every marriage. Dear Father, help us, show us how to love. Show us as men how to lead. Show us as men how to follow you in your directions. Dear Father, help us to be men that pray. Teach us how to be husbands and teach us how to be leaders. Not dominant, but loving. Teach us how to be servant leaders. Lead by example. Teach us right now, God. And for every brother that feels he's not respected, for every man that feels that that's feeling broken and feel like giving up on himself and even his marriage I declare and decree that you strengthen him right now bless him right now show him love and show him respect help us God to love our wives like we love ourselves Help us to love our lives like we love you and help us to have a deep spiritual connection until we will give all for her. I want you to touch these ladies right now. Please let them understand the power that they have with the man that loves them. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, give them wisdom to choose their words carefully. Teach them how to love us. Teach them how to respect us. Teach them how to support us. Teach us both how to communicate with each other. And help us to cleave. And help us to unite as one. Dear Heavenly Father, I want you to touch all of my brothers and sisters that desire a spouse. Dear Father, before Rabaroko Mada Sika de Berioko, Rama Rakan, Dobarakan, Dariasika, and the Boroko, Roma Mamana Sika, and the Beriaka, Babo, Rakan, the Barasi. God, bring forth mental, spiritual, and emotional healing. Yes, God. All of the brokenness in the Rabba ba 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 shika da ba roko ba shika da ba ro ya bring forth healing and mend them back together right now. God touch them and bless them and strengthen them, God, and, and let them understand that their Adam or their Eve, God, is right there. But God give them the capacity to believe you enough. Give them the strength to respect themselves enough and to respect you enough to wait. Let them understand that they desire to be the husband and that they desire to be the wife. I come against right now every distraction in their life. I come against everything right now that's preventing them from getting closer to the person that you have them. But God, I declare and decree that you touch them right now. Their Adam is out there. Hallelujah. Their Eve is out there. Hallelujah. And dear Heavenly Father, right now, I feel the anointing. Dear Heavenly Father, until you connect them with their spouses, give them a focus and a dedication to you. Let them love you more than anything. Let them expect greatness. Let them be open to who you have in their lives. So dear Father, touch our children right now. I declare and decree you release divine protection around them. I declare and decree that you touch them and you bless them and you strengthen them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Dear Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I want you to give our educators and the administration and the administrators of these schools, give them the wisdom and give them the strategies and the clarity yes, to what to do to move forward so our children can be saved. Yes, Dear Father, we're living in a complicated time, 
But the scripture did say in all that ways acknowledge you and you should yes. direct our path. God direct their paths. Yes. yes. In the name, in the name of, Jesus. of Jesus. Dear Father, everyone under the sound of my voice that has a special prayer request or petition, I stand in agreement with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. And I promise you I'm going to get off this. But the Holy Spirit told me to tell all of my single brothers and sisters. He said, you need to already carry yourself like a husband. You need to already carry yourself like a wife. The Bible said, him that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Which means you're already a wife mentally. Cop that. And spiritually and emotionally before God connects you to your spouse. My brothers, you're already a husband. Which means, if you are aspiring to be a husband, that means you need to be committed to God. That doesn't mean they to go around sleeping with all these different people with no intentions of marrying them. Because what God is telling me to tell you, you're going to reap what you sow. So what God said, if you love him, he's going to give you the self-control. I keep hearing this. He's going to give you the self-control to not play with people's emotions. Amen. God is telling me to tell you, my brothers, that if you have no intentions of being respectful, don't even tempt them with this idea of commitment. Amen. Because you're being deceived and you're deceiving them. But God is saying that I want my people to love me. God said, I want my people to already have this idea and mantle of what a spiritual God relationship looks like. And what God is telling me to tell every person that's single, do not let your guard down and do not compromise. I keep hearing this. Y'all, I'm just going to be obedient. God is telling me to tell you, you have too many people talking in your ear. And too many people making you feel bad about standing up and for having a standard. You know what you want. And what God is telling me to tell you is that people of God, we date differently from people in the world. People of God trust God enough and ask God to sustain us, to help us to sustain ourselves until Mr. to your husband or to your wife come in the scene. But God is saying is that we're, I heard this clear as day, God is going to take us, God is about to take the fear of being alone away. God is telling me to tell you, robo, robo, see, that he is about to take the spirit of being desperate. The Lord told me to tell somebody that he needs you to start rebuking that spirit of loneliness, start rebuking that spirit that's telling you that you have to compromise, that I am a local, because God still has some saved brothers out there that love God and that will be committed to God and their wife, and that's a lie from hell that's telling you that you have to share. Oh, Lord, am I hearing too much? Jesus. Because God said that the people of God, we have come out of the world. He said we've had a transformed mind. He said we don't behave and think and process life and information like the world. God has said if you're going to love me, he said if I'm a God that answers prayers, I can answer your prayer. He said but you have to act like I'm about to answer your prayer. He said stop taking matters in your own hands and getting this stuff or these people that I never ordained for you to have because you're afraid of being alone. But what God is telling me to tell you that today is going to be a day that he is going to give you the anointing and the power to be focused on him and to stand up and not compromise because you're... Come on. Let me slow down. The story of Ruth and Boaz. Your Boaz is out there. And for my brothers, your Ruth is out there. God is saying that some of this drama and some of this dysfunction that we have is nothing but a distraction to keep us from focusing on him. Amen? Amen. Put those hands together and give God some praise. Come on, you can do better than give God some praise. So I am here to announce that I feel this in my spirit that we're about to have some weddings in this church. Oh, I 
I heard this, I'm going to get ready. He said, your commitment to me is going to be a test of how you're going to be committed to your spouse. Do I need to say that in Spanish? Yes. He said, I am developing on adult stress. I am developing, we about to do the offering, y'all. He said, I'm developing the habit of commitment. He said, the way he's going to develop the habit of commitment is by you being committed to him. Yes. Amen. Let's put those hands together. Give God some praise. Somebody say spots. spots. And wrinkles. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Say no more spots. No more spots. And no more wrinkles. It's time for the worship God with our giving. Come on, give God some praise. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much. Even though we are having virtual church, our bills are not virtual. Praise the Lord. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. So we do appreciate everyone. You all have been doing such an awesome job by supporting this ministry during, during this pandemic. We are not behind on any bills. We have been able to meet all of our obligations. And there's three ministries that this church is supporting. We're feeding the homeless. We are supporting the orphanage over in Panama. We're doing this because of your tithes and your offering. So I do appreciate that you all are supporting this ministry. A lot of ministries feel that they have to open up because they're afraid that they're not going to be able to meet the bills. I can tell you, thank you for making it easy on the reverend, amen, amen. because you all have been supporting. So I just want to encourage you all to continue to pay your tithes and give your offerings. There's several ways that you can give. You can go to www.church.org to our website. You can, If you've already downloaded the Word of Worship Church app, you can play Bless. Come on. Um, the Word of Worship Church app, you can play. Pay on there. And also, you want to give the old-fashioned way. By check and you want to mail your tithes and offer it in, you can mail it to the Word and Worship Church, 635 Burkhoon's Industrial Loop, Suite 200, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71118. And finally, you can text to give your offering. Amen? You can text 7 WW Church space give at 77977. I know there's a lot of ways to give, so God bless you. Amen? Amen. At this time, um, Lakeith, I want you to come back up. I know, baby. She's just smiling. Amen. This is an example of a submitted, respectful, supportive. You said I had to add a mother too on it. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes. Amen. I thank God for, for my wife. She is, uh, she's just a blessing. And again, I do appreciate you all for supporting this ministry. We thank God for you. If you don't mind where you are, please stand as we prepare our hearts and minds for the benediction. If you don't mind, sweetheart, won't you pray us on out of here on this morning. Father, we thank you for being who you are in our lives. We thank you for the word that has come forth on this morning, God. We ask that you would just help us to submit to you, God. Help us to love you. Help us to feel your security. Help us to feel safe in you, God. Father, we ask that you would protect our families, protect our spouses. God, just continue to pour your anointing on every relationship that we are in, everyone that we are connected to, God, we ask that you would just bless them and bless our relationship, continue to protect us, and continue to help us to love one another and love you as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and we love you. Amen.